other currency world. They are arranging up to 37,000 traders at any given time at the moment. They are trading simultaneously. There aren't any other um, concrete programs to, to teach the people to trade. And the, the traders that are now keeping the, the information to themselves that they don't want to, to share with others. Right, so you've, open, um, you've opened your account with Polony uh, X and when you fill in the form, the only thing you need to know with the cell number you fill in, you must put a plus two seven space in the number without the zero. But you've done it, you were successfully up in this. You didn't skip this up. You in. That's why you didn't have any problems. Alright, so you've got an exchange with graph chain and the trends of the graphs which is every trader wants to learn what are the trends I'm seeing over there. On the top half, you can see there's a USDT exchange. That means you can trade between US dollars and 16 other cryptocurrencies. So in other words, if this was now the Bitcoin versus the dollar, you would be clever if the Bitcoin starts falling you need to you need, you need sell it for dollars, then you buy more Bitcoin. Sell it for dollars, buy more Bitcoin. Sell it for dollars and you make money whether the price goes up or down. So in December, January of this year, if you had been trading just a dollar Bitcoin with the volatility, you would have made in, from the 15th of December to the 15th of January a minimum of 200%. So every time it changes direction, you make money. The second thing, the, the, that's the US dollar exchange. You can see there's the US uh, BTC price. When I wrote, rewrote this course in April, the Bitcoin price was 1,229. What is the price now? 1,800. So if you don't have 20, 30, 40, 50,000 rands to buy Bitcoins, you buy what you can and you make it more Bitcoins. And that's the purpose. You can make small amount of Bitcoins, a lot of Bitcoins on this exchange. That's just a little bit of patience, but you're going to get there. So, on the, on the next um, part of this, you'll see on the left is a BTC exchange. So, that is what your screen is open on now. You will see there's a hundred different cryptocurrencies on the exchange. Those cryptocurrencies are the top cryptocurrencies in the world. They are mainstream cryptocurrencies. They're not cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and OneCoin and some of those um, illegal schemes or Ponzi schemes or Mavro coin or Kippy coin. They are real currencies that are accepted and are useful in the market. So you can try to, you buy, you use your Bitcoin to buy into any of those currencies and you get cashed out your profit back into Bitcoin. Then the next thing on the number four is what we call the troll box. So the troll box is where the guys are having discussions on all the currencies, what's happening in the market. There are actually some of them are sucking each other. Buy this, buy this, buy this. And then we've got these administrators or policemen on the group that actually that, that look like a little shield with the blue he says hey you busy or he bans him for an hour or a day so the guys get very excited and uptight but they trade traders are emotional people anyway all markets are emotionally related we can go into that just now right so the, this is uh, on the top left here you've got your your Bitcoin exchange, your US dollar exchange. You won't use these two because they are all the others but only with a few currencies between each other. You will see also on the top here it says exchange. That's where you start your, your trading. You don't worry about margin trading. You don't worry about lending unless you're multi-millionaire and you want to make 0.02% per day. So don't even worry about those two markets. At the bottom here, you've got number five, is you've got your candlestick length. So what I've set this one here to is 
24 hours, 5 minutes. So every single stripe here is called a candlestick for 5 minutes candlestick. So each one is 5 minutes long. Uh, you, can, you can actually zoom it back to down to a month or the full time frame that that uh, coin has been traded on the network exchange. So on your, on your exchange, um, you will see that there's a place where it says balances. You click on balances and it will add a drop down menu. You want to go to it where it says deposits and withdrawals. So, you, this will open up and it will show the list of all the currencies that you can um, deposit and then you will go one step further to go to the deposit address. That's where the deposit address is and you click on there, you see the following screen with the deposit address. So you will type local bitcoins and I will help you when you're ready to to move the Bitcoin to this, to this wallet as soon as it shows, it takes 15 minutes to 2 hours depending on what time of the day you do it and then you can start trading in the Why the took uh, 24 hours from Zappo to here but I, I never uh, approved it in Zappo Yeah, that's a mistake people make I could, I, I thought, my goodness I somehow made a mistake and my Bitcoin is gone. They don't follow and the I went back to Zappo and said, oh no, they still wait for my approval. And then it was in seconds. So, um, you can see the balance at the top of the screen when it shows. You click on history. Um, when you click on history, at the, you will actually see a screen that looks like that. And then all the deposit history will show that all the outgoing transactions will show. Uh, well, just a question because I've seen that the talk of people is complaining about the withdrawal. Sometimes it takes time. How long does it take when you want to withdraw some of your bitcoins? We, to, to we must understand that the blockchain was created to do four transactions per second. If there are 100,000 transactions a day going through, then you know there's a backlog yeah. in transactions. Okay. In, every transaction can be monitored, but the um, clearing, that's why there's this big debate in the world at the moment where the Bitcoin needs to go to this, what they call a hard fork. So they've got it on this blockchain, and this blockchain can only do so much. So what they're saying is there's three other suggestions. Which idea will we take? This blockchain, which is 10 times faster, this blockchain is says that 100 times, there is another blockchain. So, if the, the Bitcoin guys have to decide to vote which one we want to go with. Or stay with it. Or stay on the old blockchain and then accept that your transactions can take longer. Okay, so it's not the only except that, that, that controls the, no. when, they, when you see withdraw, it's, it's on the blockchain. Last year, in March, when I started trading, there was 3,000 traders, 4,000 traders on Polonians. Now there's 33,000, 37,000, 40,000. So we're looking at a thousand percent more trading going on. Because more and more people are realizing the, the, the excitement and the profitability of trading. Okay, so this is where all it starts. You see that on the top, you see volume price, the coin, um, what do you call it, the shortened letters, and then the full name of the coin, the change. So this tells you the volume in Bitcoins that it's been doing in, in 24 hours. Um, that means 34,000 Bitcoins of that coin have been traded. 7,000 have been traded. Seven, and yeah, it tells you that from 24 hours ago, if the price has increased 22% in 24 hours. So, excitement, very much um, a lot of excitement. When we are trading, when you open our, our trades, we look at the ones that are higher than 5%. 
and that those are the ones that you can make profit. It's also good to look at the high volume. High volume is important, but like Ethereum is high volume, but it's sometimes been very slow. Less than three percent in one day. I don't want to sit a whole day to make three percent. So the higher the profitability is, the better trading I can do. So look at five percent greater than twenty-four hours. Be disciplined. Do not panic. Yeah. That's what I said last time. Trading is the most emotional um, thing that ha can happen anywhere in the world. Traders get very excited when the price goes up. They get very sad and angry when the prices go down because they're losing money. That's a full moon. When the full moon comes, people spend more money. People are more emotional. When they're more emotional, they spend more money. When they spend more money, they get much. So, act quickly if you need to. Sometimes you just need to act quickly. You need to take action. You see there's an opportunity. Don't sit and think, oh, what am I going to do? You must do it. Otherwise, if, you're, if there's a 10 or 15 minute bull run, and you're 7 minutes into it, you're almost too late. Um, it's like a friend of mine that was on the group. He said he would like to be here tonight. But he, last year, no, 2015, the end, of, any, every year, the end of October, beginning of November, the Bitcoin spikes. The Bitcoin price was 3,800, 3,900 of Bitcoin. And I said to the guys in the WhatsApp group, guys, buy Bitcoin with every bit of cash you got. The guys, okay. Okay. Four days later, this guy phones me and says, how many Bitcoins have you got to see? I've got so many. The 44,000 rands of Bitcoin that I had in my wallet, I sold to him for 77,000 rand three days later. Yeah. Making use of the opportunity. And then, when I sold it to him, the next day the Bitcoin price came down a thousand rand of Bitcoin and I bought more. Okay, so, Make use of the opportunity. There are what we call, um, I say, watch troll box. Don't take it too hard. Sometimes there's a lot of hype. And you'll see that the guys will say, buy Litecoin, but Litecoin is already on the downward dive. So you, you, you can't take those guys' word. If sometimes they post a link of some, something new happening in the crypto world. And that is important, maybe, to read. Not this, all this hype that they've given you. So, Buy according to the volume, but don't you buy one Bitcoin of coins on something that's that's a very cheap coin because you're going to make the price fall. Buy huge volumes, you often make the price fall. We're going to teach you to snatch. Snatching means you're doing uh, trades between half a minute and 10, 10, 20 minutes maximum. Those are your best trades, the trades that last less than 20 minutes. Okay. You have to be trying to be patient. The traders that are snatching are making 3 to 15% per day. If you can't make 3% on a trade within 20 minutes, you shouldn't be trading that point. That point. So you, you make sure that you can make 3 to 5% on 20 minutes or 10 minutes. You can build up your own balance sheet. There's a place where you can copy all your trades that you've done and I'll show you just now if you want to see. Right, so you start with the list of currencies on the right hand side of the screen. You go through them. First of all, you look at the Bitcoin price. If you see the Bitcoin price is doing this, right. if you see it's doing this, you can try it. If you see it's doing this, don't try it. Because your, your value in US dollars is increasing while you're not doing anything. So, I've got this friend, he's a, a dentist and he's been trading, but more off than on. And he bought himself 177,000 rands of Bitcoin, he got 16 Bitcoins. He traded, he lost 4 Bitcoins. But he bought his Bitcoins for 10,000 rands of Bitcoin. 
So after losing four bitcoins, we looked at the value of his 12 bitcoins and it was still under the 70,000 rand. He said, what must I do? I said, wait. It was two months, not even two months later. I phoned him, I said, have you still got your 12 bitcoins? He said, I've got my 12 bitcoins. I said, your 12 bitcoins are now worth 377. Can you make money while you wait? Absolutely. So, so you can sell 170,000 rand worth of bitcoins and then he has no risk. I told him, I told him we, because his wife loaned him the money and he's nervous because his wife is on his case now because he's losing uh, money on trades and should he sell, must he sell because she's not going to have her, her money back. And guess what? Just by waiting, he said to me now, his wife wants to withdraw 50,000 of that and go overseas on the holiday. That's all perfect. So, this is the secret about trading. When you trade, you learn not to panic. You learn to take advantage of the markets. You, you always can benefit from every change of direction, provided that you are in a, in a group of like-minded people. Because last year, uh, which we looked at the graph of Ethereum last year, 17, 21st of June. There was a hack. Ethereum brought out a new token called DAO, and the DAO was hacked, and there was a hundred million dollars of coins stolen. So the guy, the the prices dropped from 21 to seven, and the guys were phoning me, "What's going on? Are we losing money? Is this something we can trust?" I said. Traders see price falls as opportunity to buy more. And when it hit rock bottom, I doubled my money in one weekend from one to two dollars. So you can profit by strategically looking at. So you look at what's the, there's a list. There's a hundred cryptocurrencies you can choose from, and that's the first thing you do. The second thing is to look at what the graph is doing. For this particular graph, it's a flat graph, it's a horizontal graph. You're not interested in a horizontal graph, there's no profit here. Unless you bought there, you would have made a profit. So that, that graph you will actually just leave alone. The third thing is you start filling in your little form on the left hand side where it says buy. Let's quickly take it to the site itself. On the, on the left side, you see buy. You have so much in bitcoins, and you fill in this amount here. You don't ever fill in the amount of the coin that you want. You say, I want 0 0.1 bitcoins value of this currency. I want 0 0.01. I want 0 0.001. The lowest amount you can put for a trade is 1 rand 90. Two rand. Let's say two rand. The smallest amount you can put in for a trade is two rand. So you can trade with very small amounts. Of it. So you fill in the amount there. When you, when you fill, while you're filling in, and you only fill in the bottom there, you put there 0 0.001. How much is 0 0.001? Does anyone know? Oh, how much it's worth? How much? Twenty-seven rand. Right. So as I fill it in, do you notice that the, the form gets filled in automatically? Then, when I've bought it, the amount will appear on the right hand side here, and we'll do some live trades just now. I don't know why my mess up here on the trades. You fill in the amount here. And let's say. That 917 then will appear at the top there. Then I will take 917. I will put my price that I want to sell it for. I bought it at 109. I want to sell it for 120. So 
So the most important thing when you do place or sell orders is change the price to what you want to sell it. And then when you fill in the price, you can skip on a How do you determine the price you want to sell it? I just took a, 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 a it number. So the main thing is I'm not going to open a trade if I can't make more than one percent. Okay, so first of all, let's go back to this particular graph. Sorry, your calculator. Which one? What are you using for a calculator? Okay. Work out the following number. One and one divided by. 113. 113. Yes. Equals. 0.8930. I want I want you to, to teach you something because this is one of the most important things you need to do before you open the door. So the profitability of the day is 10.62%. So anytime you do any numbers, you take the bottom digit. Okay, let's do this one. Um, let's take that candlestick. 106. <coughs> Divided by 113. Hundred minus ninety three point eight. Hundred six point two. So that then six point two percent. This is a good one to trade on. Can you see how our profitable it is? Making six percent, ten percent in in five minutes. But that is now if it is the, your buy line that you can buy at that low price. That's, yes, well obviously there's different factors. That, that from, if you bought down here at 98, you would have had 15% plus. So 98 divided by 113. Point 
13.28%. Huge profit. If you had 10,000 rand on this trade, you would have made 1,328 rand. And that's better than pocket money. So if you're only trading 100 rand at a time, then it's 13 rand you're making on a trade. So you can make it a couple of times per day. If you, I, I showed a guy who who was trading, who had 100,000 rand in, in trades, and I said, if you decide, I'm only going to make 0.2% profit on every trade. And we worked out you'd make 80,000 rand a month. 80? 80,000 rand. 0.2%. 0.2%. So he's not greedy. So let's say you, you're placing... Now, is it, I'm just going a little bit ahead now because you're asking the question. If I see the price is falling, I'm always wanting to buy here or underneath. Because well, let's talk about the building event also. This shows you how high, according to the volume of trades there is, it will go. So in other words, that's going out of the, the, the extreme extent, so that's dangerous. Over here, it's going below the extreme extent, and it's a good time to buy it because it always, all the trades will always want to go back to the middle. So, what it bounces, it will always bounce between your building and that. So, over here, you saw it falling, 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 so you buy 100 rand, 100 rand, 100 rand. So, you're placing buy orders lower than what the price. Why did this fall? So in the price is, let's say the price is 113. <coughs> now while it's falling, I'm placing my, my buy orders in at 102, 101, 198, 97, 96. Buy it until 85. 100 grand, 100 grand, 100 grand. Then I'm planning already on selling them. So when the price goes up, because Pilani expects 0.4% of my trade. So I must add 0.6% onto all my trades to make 0.2. So what I'm doing is I'm buying, I'm buying here, selling there. Buying there, selling there. Buying there, selling there. And you make 400 so you trades a day. Small amounts, but a lot of it. 400 trades, work out 400. I understand that thing, that sounds, sounds now not. Because it didn't sound for me. You see, my mistakes. I wait for a you. You that's instead of making small amounts, I try to make a big no. amount. So, amounts. if we're looking at the trades before we go and start trading ourselves, let's go and look at what our first the one at the top. The one at the top is Ripple. So, what we will we we'll just have to quickly refresh this screen. Oh, there it is refreshed. All right. When, when you guys came here earlier on, um, sorry you missed out something, but I'm going to repeat it here for your sake. When, when we watched this happening earlier, we actually watched that did this. It went doom, doom. Then I said, okay, let's go to the next currency because there's a pattern for most of them. Dum, dum. Okay, this one is, is not as bouncy as the other one. But the film is not that Let's, No, we're not even bothering too much. Let's look at buy call. Dum, dum. And what we saw, um, the one that was ahead, was buy call. Yeah. So what we see is there's like a five, that the waves are following each other. They, this one is here already, this one is climbing. They're doing this. So if we want to know what's possibly going to happen next, is the price is going to fall. So we don't, if we look back at the, the other graphs, we actually see that, that that's actually what happened. That one, is the, there's going to be another fall there. And look at that. This is falling again. So if you watch, Take the top 10 and open them all in new tabs. You see I've opened them in new tabs. Open them in new tabs 
and then you can watch. There's a there's a trend that they're all following. And the trend is because of the Bitcoin price. Because let's take Ethereum. I actually had um, a call from Tashis uh, last night and what Tony is doing is strategy. And because Tony is not trading, he, there's a part of the strategy that's not working. I'll tell you now. Um, so, let's look at Bitcoin. But then we go to exchange. And you go to US dollar. And while we're up in Bitcoin, let's look at let's look at Ethereum. This is a six six hour graph. So that's six hours back, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. So you get an idea of what's happening there. I say that Ethereum and Bitcoin are the inverse graph, they are the opposite of each other. You see that? You see that? Yeah. They're the opposite. So when Bitcoin price goes up, what did the market, what did the, the whole world, the Chinese, the Americans, the Europeans, all sell their Ethereum to get Bitcoin because they're really scared they're going to lose money. So they buy Bitcoin because the value is going up. But what they're not realizing is that when you take the Bitcoin price, work this out, 1750 Divided by 1,800. One thousand eight hundred. Yeah. 0.972. Okay. A 3% increase in the Bitcoin price causes a panic in the market. But there's a more profitability trading the cryptocurrencies. Because if you put it back onto BTC market like we're going to trade on, we're looking at this kind of profitability. So if the Bitcoin price comes down at 5%, your cryptocurrency is down to 20 to 30%. So that's, that's a kind of strategy. So when you open, when you start opening a trade, let me tell you which times of the day are good to trade. So, that's a long period, three hours. One of the best times of the day to trade, look, there are times between um, 2 and 3 in the morning, 3 to half past 3, and that's kind of time, but I'm talking about for the person that does sleep. Um, six, if you, after 6 o'clock, there's some good trades going on there, between 6 and half past 6, 40 to 6 mm -hmm. in the morning. 8 o'clock, Always a good time. I've always made some nice trades between 8 and quarter past 8. There's some bull markets. 10 to 11, 12 to 1. So you can plan your day around those times. Uh, you can trade with, with the crypto seven days a week, except for the, where the Chinese said don't trade. Yes. Well, although you can, but yes. you'd rather not. But it is open Saturdays and Sundays as well. Yes. Of course, Forex is not. Forex is, is we stop at Friday and start at Monday. Monday to Friday and only office hours. Yes. So this this trades 365 no 366 days a year, 24 hours a day. So one thing we want to mention while we're sitting at this point, which is part of the um, 
the, actually the advanced trading uh, solid is we, we look at the Chinese calendar. Um, this website I use a lot, it's called yourchineseastrology.com. What they do is a particular day of the month, and then you can see what is good to do those days. Like from the 26th of this month, is business trading that can be done. And believe me, those are good days to trade. So, for instance, today is not a good day for trading, it's 18. I opened the trade this morning and I actually lost some few remains in the house. So, that was before you sent out. Now, thing five. it says avoid anything else. If you don't see trading on that day and you see this, avoid trading that day. And if you do trade, don't trade longer than five minutes. I've, you sometimes you're greedy because you make, make money and you say, ah, that's like you flap in your wings and then you want to go in another trade and then the thing falls. So what we like to do is, you'll see some of those days don't say anything about trading, like this day, it doesn't say about anything about avoiding anything else, so we can trade those days. And this is just advice. You, do, you can ignore everything I'm telling you now. But let's click on the 30th. No? It's unfortunately not the 30th. The 29th. This is one of the first only days in months that I've seen the Chinese could avoid anything else. In other words, if you go and have a wedding on that day or you do something like that, it might be a bit of a disaster. They say so. I wouldn't even try to trade that day. Everything is going to be done. You'll see um, in September. September there's like people are committing suicide. Um, and then you look at the calendar and you say that there's Jewish holidays during that time. And the, and the Jewish, the, the Bitcoin prices fall during the, the, the Jewish holidays. End of January, Chinese holidays. Prices fall because the Chinese stop buying. So we're going to fill in our order, we go to decide how much of our balance we're going to use, and then we click on buy. And when you click buy, you'll see a screen like this, it will say bought, bought, maybe there's more than one order that it's bought, and you can click OK. So, Colonial X won't do anything with your order until you tell it. So your coins will lie there for as long as Colonial X exists. Next step is you fill in, you look at your balance. I bought 0.1 Sire coin. When I, bought, when I was actually placing this order um, during April, of course, I should actually go to the exchange and discuss this, but at the moment you can see there's 269,000 of that coin, of that currency. So we can call it a currency, we can call it a coin because it's tradable. I'm going to just bring this back. So I'm actually sitting on a different exchange at the moment called Bitrex and I will explain to you why we sometimes use this exchange. It is a very exciting exchange because if we go to the markets you can actually see 150 different currencies. So let's quickly move that first. So if I go to volume, go to last 
price rose on this all the new cryptocurrencies come onto this platform. So if it gets launched, immediately you buy 100, 200 bands of it. In five days, I would like to worth 5,000 bands because of the prices. So where do you follow the news on uh, what new uh, comments will come up? You follow the best. If you want to be up to date all the time with everything that's going on, you have a Twitter account. For all world news, there's nothing faster than the Twitter update. So, if there's, there was an earthquake in China, you will see five minutes ago, the Chinese government posted the earthquake. You'll only see it the next day in the rest of the world. If you want to see what's happening in the crypto space, you follow all the guys that are got currencies. And when they get updates, it all comes on your timeline, you can actually um, load Twitter on, as an app on your phone <clears throat> and say when this guy sends an update and this guy's then on the top of your screen you see that when you pull your screen down you can actually see those updates as they happen. That's a quick way. <clears throat> so when you've bought anything of a currency then you decide how much of it you want to sell. You want to sell a whole lot, number one. You want to keep it, number two. Well, the third thing is you can split it up. You don't have to sell the whole lot at one time. So, if I want to sell, if I've got a thousand bitcoins, I want to sell it into US dollars, I want to sell five bitcoins at a time. Five bitcoins at a time. Not the whole lot. Sometimes you want to sell the whole lot one time. When you're on a bull market, let's go. That's called a bull market. There's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 35, 50, 50, 50, 50. So this is an hour bull run. <clears throat> when you see the price is getting, look, it's outside, it's pulling the band. When it's getting so high, you want to sell quickly. You want to sell before it starts dipping. So you go, <clears throat> you click on the top number there. So these guys are buying and these guys are selling. You can only sell to these guys if you want to sell right away. Or you place, if you want to place a higher sell order, you can put it over there. So, if I'm selling at $1,926.70, it will come on top of that list. But if I want to sell right away, then I've got to sell for $1,900. Anyway. You can see the volume of trades that's been done. Um, there's four million eight hundred thousand dollars of trades that are open. <clears throat> so, if I want to sell seven bitcoins, eight bitcoins, I can sell them right away to that highest bidder. But if I've got ten bitcoins, then I might have to add up some more here if I can sell. But that, that, that I'll explain some other time. So there's the highest bid. So if we're talking about the apples market, these are the guys that came with, with all their boxes of apples and they are standing there on the market selling. These are the guys coming in wanting to buy. These are guys are offering lower prices than what these guys wanted to sell it for. So they, until these two agree on the price, they've got there's no sales. So if you want to buy into a market, so if I'm buying here, I see what's happening here seems to be still an upward trend. But I want to take advantage of when it hits that gold line between there. So I place orders lower than the price. If it does that, it automatically buys for me. Then when it goes up again, I can sell. So there are three set strategies you can do. When you you got you bought your coins. You can just leave them, they stay in your wallet. You can take them from your Poloniex wallet to another wallet, any exchange in the world that accepts that wallet. Make sure you send Bitcoins to Bitcoins, Litecoin to Litecoin wallet, Dogecoin to Dogecoin wallet, Ripple to Ripple wallet. Don't make the mistake I made. I send Bitcoin to a Dash wallet. 
uh, and it went and it disappeared. Oh. 10,000 rand. So I sent Pilani a message. I said, I made a mistake, what can I do? So they somehow recovered our oh. request. Oh. But that was a miracle because don't, you, you don't send the Bitcoin to another wallet, you send it to a Bitcoin wallet. You send Litecoin to a Litecoin wallet. So each one has got its own blockchain that it runs. A pipe, the pipe from there to there. You put only oil down the oil pipe and petrol down the petrol pipe. You don't put petrol down a water pipe because you're going to have problems. So, <clears throat> I look so worried. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's that's now placing a trade. Once you've sold your your coins, your balance will be come on the left hand side. In this case, you bought, you, you, your balance will be in US dollars. But let's go back to the the main exchange that we will be trading on, which is the Bitcoin. So, we've got different traders. Some of our traders only like to trade US dollars, and the US dollars, they're happy with that, because if you've got 10 Bitcoins or 20 Bitcoins, and the price change is $20, in 20 minutes. $20 on 10 bitcoins is how much profit? $200. $200 within an hour is not bad. So that's what these guys are doing. And then of course when the price goes up, they make money again. So let's get to the rest of the presentation. Now I understand because I I thought they were gonna they so the Bitcoins on the market like Lepro Bitcoin and then yeah. they go and buy it in front. I didn't realize you can buy it here for the Yeah. Well, you can buy US dollars. You can't buy a Bitcoin from unless you've got US dollars. Let's say it's like the guy that bought himself 121 Litecoins. I said to him, because the Litecoin price was falling, I said, move all your Litecoins to Peloni X buy bitcoins with that because of bitcoin prices so you want to always put your money on something that price is rising and withdraw that to a different currency <clears throat> so a guy that's trading US dollar rands he trades only if he, if he sells when the price falls and he buys when the price goes up he makes money two directions All right. so what you do here is you want your calculator, whether you use a cell phone calculator, your calculator is what's going to make you money. Unless you Quivers, of course, who's got spreadsheets with already calculated values. Not all of us are like that. So you put 37, you bought it for 37. What is 37 plus 1.4%? 1.4%. 1 1 1 now the guys who don't want to touch their phones because they're probably not. That is uh, 1.4. 37. Just say 37 plus 1.4. Sorry? At this point, 518. 37 plus 1.4. Plus 1.4. Plus 1.4%. Okay, sorry. How much? Plus 1.4% equals. No, plus 1.4%. Equals. 37.518. So if I'm selling at 38, I'm going to make my, my profit. So if I can't make 1%, because when you buy, on the buy side, you, you pay 0.15 and you sell 0.25. So you must always consider you're paying 0.4% in total. So if you want to make 1.1% add 1.4%. So that at least you can make 1%. And then you place your sell order for 38, 39, 40. So I, I would start placing my sell orders at 39, 40, 41, 42. So if I bought 260,000 of the coin, I take 10,000 and I sell it at 39. Another 10,000, 40. Another 10,000, 41. So I split my sell order out. Instead of selling, all the boxes of, of apples I bought at 37 rand a box. I'm going to take 10 boxes and sell them at 39 rand. Another 10. So I'm going to split that 100 boxes up into 
up to 48, 49 rand. That's not a must, but that's just when you see that it's slight, slowly increasing price. Okay, then you click sell. The sell order will look like that because it's not reached there yet. So it's, it places that order on the list at the bottom of the page. So it will appear <coughs> it will appear in my open orders at the bottom of the page. And then I can always click on my trades. If I click on my trades, it will tell me every single time I've traded this currency, when I bought, when I sold, the time of the day, and I can see if I buy profits. And I ask a question again on your previous comment about selling, selling, selling. Okay. Yes. What is a good practice? 10% jump in, in prices or what percentage? Uh... There's, there's also then different strategies to sell. Okay, so let me discuss that. All my trades are on here. You'll see there's a slider, so I can slide it down and see. I bought it at 17.90, I sold it at 17.60. Why did I sell it less than what I bought it for? because the price was falling. When the price falls, you sell. You don't want to have, if the price falls one, two, three percent, if it's three percent lower than what you bought it for, you sell it. You don't want to wait for it to fall 10, 20 percent, and then hopefully it will come up one day, because that's money you could have been turning. turning. So I sell it at 17, 6, 17, 5. I wait for it to fall down to 17, 1, and then I buy more. Now I come up all, all the way up. So the strategy here at is when I when I place my buy order, I buy always lower than the volume value. We're going to discuss the volume value because to me it's my most important tool of trading. So I bought when it was outside the volume value. So yeah. do you never buy inside that lower part of the volume between the gold line? And you try to buy it. Oh, yeah, I would have bought, yes, definitely. Yes. If you see it, obviously, if you see it around. But now you've got to consider always percentage, percentage, percentage. If I trade from here to there, what's my profit margin as opposed to trading from there to there? So I'm increasing my profitability always because my spectrum is this risky. Mm. If I'm only trading there, I've got a smaller spectrum to trade, the profits are less. But if there's nothing else to trade, nothing else looking good, then I'll run there, but that's, if you don't put out in 20 minutes, you know, just look at that, it drops lower than yeah. where you were. So I want to buy it, and I want to work out what's my profit margin between the bottom bit in the bag and the gold line. Because trading, well, it's almost always guaranteed 95% of your trades will hit the gold bar, wherever it is. When it comes to that. So, if I want a guaranteed trade, I will place a water down here. So, I add 1.4, 2%, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2 .8, 2.8, 2.8, up until just underneath here, I'll place sell orders. So, I'll split it up there. And then I can go and have coffee. Then I can go and, and entertain my wife. And I can do lots of things. Because I'm guaranteed that it's going to hit the gold line somewhere. 99% of all trades will go. If it goes outside the building event, it will shoot the tight. So this is your guaranteed profit. But so, so you might still have a small percentage in if you didn't hit the gold line. Yes, but I didn't do that. Now, here's the trick. <clears throat> you don't panic and sell. You buy more again yeah, as it goes down, and you could buy all the way down to there, and then you made some more profit up there. There it fell down again. You bought more. You made some more profit. And there it went through the gold line. So there, there it went through the gold line. So anything you, that that you thought it actually did hit yeah. the gold line. Okay. I can see where my mistakes are. 
A person, what the problem, the traders lose money. You know why they lose money? Because they buy it, they do the right thing, and then they want to sell 10, 15, 20%. And then it doesn't go there. Some traders are lucky. It might hit there 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock to this tomorrow morning. But I don't have time to waste. I can make profit now. While I'm not making profit, I want to make sure that all my trades are less than 20 minutes. Look there, there's a 25 minute, there's a 20 minute. Even if you traded that 5 minutes, it will still um, be flat. There's, there's a 10 minute. So most of the good trades are running between 5 and 20 minutes. We were lucky the Bitcoin price uh, this afternoon went on an hour's run. But if you look at the percentage that it increased, those 5 minute candlesticks wasn't even 3 or 4 percent. So, sorry, always, when you want to buy, buy when it's below. The lower it is, the better. And work out what is your profit margin over here between these two lines. That is, that is why traders often mess up because they, they think, I want this thing, this thing is going to go jump, 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 and I'm going to sell here. And guess what? It doesn't go. Then it's falls again and all the profit that you could have made you're kicking yourself. I will tell you, it's better to kick yourself after selling and the price went higher than kick yourself for not selling and the price went down. That's where most traders might be. Any questions? So this is one this is now the first First course, you're going to come up for another follow up session, another follow up session, another follow up until you're good at this. You too, Jerry, until you're good at this. Alright, so let's get to the next part. It becomes exciting. Alright, let's talk about Japanese candlesticks. Where did they come from? In the olden days, we had no candlesticks. We had the following. That's what we had. That's how the guys trade. Huh? Imagine watching those two all the time and then thinking, how does your brain read that? It's just crazy. So, a guy by the name of Steve Nyson, he went and he found the Japanese, oh, they are clever, I mean they have been invented Bitcoin. So he said, let's, let's use this and they started using it. Of course, secret technique that came in the 1990s. We are lucky today we have it. So, <clears throat> we have the two color candlesticks and for the purpose you will see some exchanges are running black and red or blue and green and they will do every exchange but your cryptocurrency is mostly green, green and red candlesticks. <clears throat> so when the, when, if this is a red candlestick, it, it shows that when the trade started, when the price started here, at the end of the time the price ended here. So you can see there was a fall in the price. But there were things that were happening in, in between. The price went as low as that and as high as that. That's why you don't see little sticks in the bottom and the top. So that's when in, that was the highest only in the, in the trade and that was the lowest only in the trade. So the price started there in the, on the green candlestick. The price started here and it ended here. It hit a high of there and it hit the low there. Sometimes if you don't see the sticks, where it ended it was uh, at its height. This is always a dangerous part when you're trading a bull market. If that went that high and it comes down, you will know that soon the curve will be coming down. Alright, let's look at what how we analyze um, a candlestick and I'm gonna email you this presentation so you can you can keep it. Bullish candlestick, what actually happened, let's say this was probably, let's say this was an hour candlestick, five minutes, another five minutes, five minutes, and then done. 
Five minutes, then down. Five minutes, five minutes, then down. Five minutes, then down. So that's actually the end of the candlestick. So it doesn't show you all of this, what's happening in there, but it, this is the whole finish, start and finish of it. On the, on the bullish candle, the, the um, bearish candlestick. So we call it, price is going up, we call it a bull market. When it comes down, it's a bear market. Everybody likes bull and likes to talk bull. So this is what happens. The price dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped and went up and dropped and dropped and went up. So it shows you the overall standing of that hour of candlestick. But they don't show you candlesticks like this because it's too much detail, too much information. They said the bull runs out of space and the bear fell through the window. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about <coughs> support and resistance. When the price starts falling like that, that's what we call resistance. When it starts picking up, we call it support. So it's simple when you look at a graph like, we, like we're trading on down here. That's support because support means and resistance resistance is prices going down here. Right, let's talk about the, the support and resistance levels because that's an interesting thing when you start studying the candlesticks. You see, in this graph, it hit twice at the bottom and then at that point it went up at the same time. That's a support level. So when you're buying and selling, especially when you're buying, it's nice to know where the, the support levels are because that's where you're actually placing your buy orders. And then below that, we'll talk about that also. So let's talk about this. This is this often happens. It goes lower than the expected support level. That is actually where traders like to buy. The lower you can buy, the better, because you expect the price to go up. And that that is actually broken through support. If you want to write this channel down, if you ever watch PSTV channel 412, you'll see lots of um, trading, it's interesting stuff on trading the South African platform. And they, some, there's an old topic there, sometimes they talk, and he, he, he talks so much sense. Obviously, he's, he's got lots of experience. Channel 412. <coughs> So we've gone through the resistance and um, there's broken resistance. Okay. More information. More, more resistance, minor resistance. So you can also see there's some tops forming there. Um, tops where it's actually uh, twin, twin peaks they call it. And there's another two tops. So when you're buying and you want to place a medium long term trade, you know, in every six weeks, six months, it hits a certain height. Then you place your sell orders below that, that level because you don't want to place them there and then it goes down before the price to sell. But this is not information you need to know now. Just reading a graph and reading a candlestick is the most important thing to get started. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about buying the band because to me this was my most important lesson in trade. So Bullinger Bands is one of the biggest, best tools for trading. You'll see on your Panoni X, there will be, when you open your account, people look like this, you see there's a little, little setting there. I'm just going to click that. Yours will look like that. So, you see two trend lines, 
the blue line and the gold line. I call it the, the blue line here, I call it the middle line, the C, blue C. And I call the gold line the real gold. So, when gold is underneath the sea or underneath the ground, how much is it worth? Not much. When it's above the ground, it's worth something. So, while the gold line is above the sea, the price isn't going up. As it starts dipping and falling, the price is going down. While it's underneath the sea, the price is continuing to fall. And then it stays underneath the sea until there's a split coming in, and it might jump up again. Or the other way, that we need the wood in the veins to tell us what's going to happen. So, your blue trend line, this is the center line of all the trading. So, your graphs, your candlesticks will go up and down, and this will be the center of it. The gold line tells you that the prices are picking up. You see, as the price started leveling out there and started coming down, Candlesticks are prices for. So if you see any leveling out of your gold bar, you sell. You sell. Alright, so then at the bottom you see it kept on falling, kept on falling. There was leveling out again and picking up. Immediately there was a there was an increase in the price. Now it's going to cross over. We're gonna if it touches and it goes through, then the price is gonna go up. Let's go back to the, um, and now add the setting on the top there. You see that um, volume in there. You see now there's two new blue lines there. Those two blue lines are the live savers. The top one tells you, let's, let's quickly um, put it on 24 hours so you can see more, discuss more detail. Five minutes, 24 hours. And now you can see that it's, it's bulging sunglasses. And it's narrowing sunglasses. So, when it's narrow, it's because the market is quiet. When it's wide, it's called a loud market. So that's a quiet market, that's a loud market. And the quiet markets are always preparing for the loudness. So the, the more this thing is squeezing, 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 it's like that hose pipe. When you push it, the more you push it, the more the water is going to come out like that. So you're either going to get and that, that, that is warning you there's something big coming. Sometimes the guys think it's dead, and when they look again, they've missed out on some big opportunity. So, the building a band. This is telling you, according to the volume of trades at the moment, how high the market will go. This is telling you, because of the volume of the trades, how low the market will go. When you have it bursting out of your building the bank, that's dangerous because it's going to come down. When it goes below the building the bank, look, if you bought here, it might have been a bit crazy to buy there. So you have to wait for your green candlesticks. So anytime you see three of any color candlestick, you know the trend is down. If the three green candlesticks, you know the trend is going to go up. So these are 500 candlesticks. That's guaranteed almost 80% of the time that's what will happen. So you wait for them to push out as far as possible and then it actually pushed right back into the center again. Then it fell out again, back almost to the center. Then it fell out again, pushed right to the center. So remember the center is where all the trades want to go. If it's high, it's dangerous, it will push down to the gold bar. If it's below the, the bottom building the band, it will shoot back to the center.
So if I'm placing a track, let's take this over here. I bought here. We do our sell. Sell on the golden line, where I can see the golden lines. So I can make a profit between there and there. If I have time to wait for it to carry on going through, which it did, doesn't always look there. It, it never went through there. It never went, but you can... Then went a little bit through there, but you're not guaranteed that it's going to go all the way up. So, you're trading between the bottom millionaire band and your gold line, it's almost guaranteed profit. <coughs> the guys are trading, you traded on this one, you would have to. I think we worked out 19 trades in 24 hours. 19 trades, an average of 4%. That's 20 times 4 is you would have made 80% on trading in 24 hours. Patience, as I repeat something, you want to hold the stick and show me something? One thing I can tell you guys, I said the air about, I don't know, is it a few Saturdays ago? Yeah. And today I understand more. So don't, don't, don't think you should understand everything too much. Yeah. Now I've, I've now, th those things that I've struggled with now, I start to see, ah, okay, that's he is telling me that's why I make my notes now. I'm going to see if I make all my mistakes again. Yeah. So, what we need to do is we need to just be, not conservative, but we need to be strategic about our trades. I want to make as quick money as possible. Somebody says, comes to me and said, said, I can make 40% per month. I said, that's not good money. I can make it in a day. And they say, how do you do that? I had a guy finding me from um, some forex firm the other day. And I told him, I'm, I'm actually making between three and four, 400% per month. He says, sir, sir, uh, you know, Enjoy your platform, we can, can't even come here that so enjoy the rest of your day. You're just honest with me and say goodbye. Even in property we can't I start the month, I start the month with 0 0.1, uh, 0. What is it? I don't know, it, it ends up about 400% every month that I end up trading on. And it's just, some of them, some, some days I don't even trade more than 15, 20 months. I saw a good market and I traded it. So let's talk about these bullying events because this is a very important thing. <coughs> so there's a loud market, there's a quiet market. Always don't be put off by a quiet market because that is the time for. <coughs> and I will show you how to read whether it's going to go up or down also. Okay, let's talk about the bullying about. When it goes outside your pulling the bank, that's when you call it a bounce because it jumps up and it comes back again. So if you look at the next graph, it bounces right down in there. So anytime you're trading there, you are dangerous. You should be safe. Rather sell here than aim to sell there and lose your profit. Because when they come down, they come down very fast. A greed, greed makes traders lose money. There's nothing else. And of course, not 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 educating themselves. So let's talk about the Bollinger squeeze. There is a squeeze there from a wide, loud market squeeze, and then it starts jumping up. So that's what happens. Price shoots up. Not always. Not always. Um, it, what they're showing there is that there's one of two things that can happen. Your price, look, here's the middle line, and here's the bottom bullying line. Look how this graph was bouncing between the middle line all the time. If it keeps bouncing off the middle line back to the bottom, it's going to carry on going down. It has to bounce on top of the 
her little life for it to go up. And there it, it, it actually started back coming up nicely and started dancing there. When it goes outside the building, the band got a new trend and it starts going down. So anything that's pushed to the extreme will go down to the opposite extreme. So what we've got here now, we've got it dancing at the bottom here. It's going to break through there in the next 15 minutes. And then it's going to start shooting up. So like this trend here, it was keep on pushing it down, even the, the lines are doing this. It kept on pushing it down. But what happens at your end of your, your bull run, you have it going to a, a, a limit, and then you actually see your price shifting like horizontally. You see how it's shifting horizontally, and then it starts shifting. So we can't wait for that gold line to cross the blue line. So it's just some information um, about the winning the band. But the most, most important thing is dangerous to, to buy, you must sell it. Yeah? Best time to buy. Best time to buy. Why? Because it's broken through the volume of the band. Best time to buy. Best time to buy. Best time to buy. Time to buy. You, can, you can start trading now, but your profitability is only that much. As if you bought there, the profitability is that and that. So you Training here means you're only going to make half the profit you could have made. Yeah. We're going to um, just discuss um, some of the, the astronomical things. We discussed it a little bit earlier. Um, sorry, so. Can you quickly take a break or I need to go? Okay, please take a break. Just what we're looking at, this is part of the consideration that we need to remember is that there are changes, there's cycles, there's phases. Just like are you married, sorry? Yeah. It took a while to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can document something. That you you can predict that your wife is gonna be for between five and seven days a month, she's not going to be okay. Because she has what they call a women's cycle. And that cycle, you are guaranteed that even she doesn't know what's going wrong with her. Some days it's like that. Um, <laughs> on the second of the month, I know that my wife is not upset that she wants to fight with me and that. I look at the date and I say, but that's normal. Every 28 days, the moon changes, the woman changes, things happen. So, we need to consider that the same happens with trading also. With the US dollar, we've got the, this whole thing is busy happening under our eyes all the time. Let me show you. On my birthday. On your birthday? Yeah. Oh, did you see? Okay, let's go back um, to the website. On the 28th of January, at, okay, this is Greenwich Mean Time, so it's two, 7 minutes past 2, New Moon. And farmers know that first quarter, full moon, last quarter, and sometimes even new moon. These three, these, these three phases is normally there's rain. So they plant their crops before that, the prices of soya and millies and things go up, and then on that day, the prices go down again because they stop buying. So then, there's something with the other day was, uh, what is, this is the May, eh? the 10th of May. The 11th and the 12th it rained like you couldn't believe. Have a look which days it rained. Is. Oh, 
terrible loss here. Bitcoin price. Now, if we if we just take this graph over here. And we scroll down to the more specific times of the month. You see that May has a few events. You have certain positions like the moon is of the Earth, and then sometimes in Mars at a certain position, moon when it's the furthest from the Earth. Then some nights you see there's a little planet near the, the moon, and it's just. Saturn, and on that night, there's the biggest changes in the markets. You can go and pull all the graphs back onto that day, and you'll see how the markets change. <clears throat> so all of these little things, some of them are significant because I, are, are, I'm going to show you how the Bitcoin price changes on these busy, on these times. So there was new moon, the price. Was coming down on new moon, the price started picking up. The next one was moon at apogee, when the moon is the furthest, prices were shut up. So there was a short piece there. The next time it was moon at Saturn, Saturn pushes the prices down hectically. If it was going up, it would hectically push it up again. So you see huge changes during that time. Next one is moon at first quarter. Pushes it up. They push it up a little bit more. Full moon. Full moon has a huge effect on the markets, pushing the price up. Moon at descending node, the price is going up. Moon at the high, prices started going down. And I took this off Coindesk's website, so I didn't make this up myself. So every time there was a change of moon phase, there was a change of direction in the market. And if you're trading forex and you follow this, you will only trade those times that I showed you now, eight, nine times a month. You wouldn't even worry about the rest. So if you see it's it's full moon and the price is doing this, on the, within half an hour to the full moon, you are already knowing that the price is going to change direction. And you just wait for that change to happen and you buy it. Right, so for, for traders, the biggest thing about trading is numbers. Right, when you use your calculator day and night, day and night, you're going to use it to make your money. Well, this has worked out a, a Excel spreadsheet, so it puts a number in and it tells you so much percent, that's where you sell it, so much percent, that's to go with that. So, trading is a numbers game, you're going to need your calculator, we're going to live our lives by numbers until the day we die. When you look at your bank account, you see those numbers that makes you either very sad or very happy or confused. The numbers, we want, we want zeros in the, that direction and not that direction. That confusing, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we want the zeros in the right place. Yeah. We want the, the ones and the twos and the stuff right in front of all the zeros, not behind the zeros. So, it's going to be worth, be worth knowing, as we said, there are times of the day when it's good to trade. You can take any currency and you can see when they peak, they almost peak within five minutes of each other sometimes. So you can trade one, finish the trade, trade the next one, finish the trade, and then it's an hour you've done 40% of it. But it will take some time too. Main thing is have, make sure that you've got a good internet connection. There's a program that I would like everybody to, to download, and it's, it's one that I use for super anti spiral.
you will if you ask it to give you the free version or the, or the paid version. And if you set the free version, then what it does is it, it, you must update it every day and then do a search on your computer because while you're trading, sometimes you see that your computer is slowing down because you're spending time on the computer and on the internet. And anti-virus um, anti programs don't pick up all of these spywares. The spy is actually there to slow your internet connection down so that it can look at your computer for passwords and banking information and that sort of thing. So you open this program, it will look like this. And then once you download it, you say click here for updates. You let it run updates. The difference between the free one and the, and the paid one is the paid one locks the spyware before it comes in. The free one searches the computer once while they so it's up to you whether you want to have the free one or the, I think the, the paid one is $29. So I update it and then while I'm when I'm finished updated I do a search. So this thing picks up between 29 and 150 spy programs. So while you're surfing, someone else is looking at your information, trying to slow you down, trying to steal your, steal your stuff off your computer. So when it's done, I say scan. It will ask me if I want to close my internet browser. Sometimes I say yes, other times not. So then it starts scanning. I could just minimize it and it starts scanning in the background. On your, <coughs> on your cell phone, you will download an, an, an application called Google Authenticator. On the phone it will look like, you see that little thing that looks like a vault? Then when you open it up, it, every time, every one of your Bitcoin accounts, you will have a different number. So you will protect your Bitcoins from being stolen. Bitcoins are being stolen more than conventional money. Because it's so easy to send money anywhere in the world. So anytime I want to log into any of my programs, I've got to see what number, if that number changes every 30 seconds. So that's your protection for, even if somebody has your username and password, they can't log into your account. It's a very, very, and if, if that company that you are, that's holding your Bitcoins uses your Bitcoins, they are held accountable to pay back. Right, that, the, at the time when I actually wrote about penny stocks, penny stocks are your very, very cheap coins. So if I had to go back to the market um, and I say, You'll see some, some of the currencies have become very expensive, others are still cheap. It does that because it's um, because it's scanning the computer now. But 
the wallet stream there. You will see like this one there, BCN. It's 0, 0.00000109 Bitcoin. So it's very, very cheap compared to the Bitcoin price. In other words, you can, if you buy a thousand rands of that, you probably get 2 million coins. So somebody that's planning a medium and a long term strategy, like the guy the other day that uh, you were here when Paul was there. Yeah. He bought the Litecoins on Altcoin Trader for between 55 and 85 rand six months ago. And he bought 121. So he probably paid about seven, seven and a half thousand rand. And he kept it. And now, six months later, he logs into his account and he looks at the price of Litecoin was 520 rand. So his 7,000 rand is worth 70,000 rand. So buy, buying the penny stocks, the cheapies, and waiting for that to go up, your price doesn't go up 10 or 20 percent, your price goes up in hundreds of percent. Like I've got a friend, he bought Bitcoin when it was 70 rand. He's still happy he bought it. <laughs> Questions? So, uh, always when you table and you must just uh, make sure that uh, you buy when it's extremely low, you know that uh, you will land. Yes. And uh, uh, wait for it to go up. And just before it goes up, you have to go to the line. That's when you say. Yes, there's two. There's a few places you can sell. Let's go back to this cloth. You bought here. It mm -hmm. went below the building you made. If the if this thing is going down like this, then you don't buy it there because it's it still can go further down. So this is flat. So there's a safe place to buy. You buy. Safe place to sell is always somewhere underneath the below. That's the safest place. If you're willing to wait it out, which a lot of people don't do, then you can wait until it goes up there. Like if there, if you bought there, you could have waited right until there. That, that would have been an hour and a half straight. But you're not always guaranteed. So my prince policy is always, yeah, there, there was no bottom there. So there you would have bought, Sold, bought, sold, bought, sold. So when you see those green candlesticks, can you see green candlesticks mean? There's going to be more green candles. Any three red candlesticks means it's going to be more going down. Then the longer those, the, I love the long red ones, more than the long green ones. Because if I'm sitting here, I don't like to buy up here. It's already too high. But if I can make 5% from there to there, okay, fine. My aim is always to wait when the bottoms are. So I will wait for that. When I see that long, short one, it's 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, I put a board. So from there to there is 12%. Yeah, that's it. So look like that there now. That, that would have been ideal place to buy them because from 94 to 107 is 13, 14%. So a, a trader wants to think strategically how low can I buy when the market is full? The lower I can buy, so I will place a little sell order there on that line. Another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. I'll put it right in there. So I'll put 100 rand, 100 rand, 200 rand, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200. And then, okay, I didn't buy all of them. It only got there. But I'm making more profit when it comes back up. So one thing you need to do is when you open your, can I need click on there, 
you'll see the drop down there because you won't see these two lines. Click on volume of bank so that these two lines can show up. Then that is, there's your safe buying zone, there's your unsafe buying selling zone. You, I always make sure that I've sold by the time I hit that. Because it's going to come down here. I can put it on a 24 hour and let's quickly go back to one of the others. Let's see a different graph. See the guys are talking on this on this group here on the stroll box. Mm -hmm. So the troll box is lots of conversation going on. And if you want to be part of that conversation, you're welcome to be part of the conversation. You could create yourself a nice little troll name. Don't put yeah. your real name. Mm -hmm. And then you can chat. You can you can click on one of the guys. This one, condom, wormwood, flavor, and one of them. But these are the these are the, the policemen, the, the administrators of the group, and they you can ask them questions and sometimes they ban the guys because they shouting at each other or they're angry. So you can you can address anybody on the group and write if you want to see who I am here, yeah, you'll see my name is November. And there the guys are saying things. Golem is almost ready for a 0.60 release. So that's useful information that this currency called Golem is actually one of the Ethereum's points. It is a launch can happen and the price is going to shoot up when the launch happens and come down. Litecoin, they had this announcement recently that there's a new blockchain that's going on. There was an announcement, the price went up and came down. So it's nice just having some extra information so that you can make some more profit. Every three to four weeks a new currency comes on the thing. People trade like crazy, make under 200 percent in three days, and then watch it. So there's chatbots. So I can if I want to talk to some why can't I cancel my order? I click on the guy, see I can talk to him now. Say I need pause of the amount of trading going on. See? Now I've addressed him. Because I clicked on his name, you will see his answer in green. So you'll be able to see if anyone that sponsors me. And he can answer me back, he can swear at me if he wants to, whatever. There's Unless the guy talking to one someone else, support is looking into the issue. So one of the administrators are actually answering him also. Let's look at the over on the Ethereum graph. So he has a, a similar kind of graph we saw just now. Huge fall out of the thing, so I take this all this big plastic ball in the swimming you push the ball, this is a swimming pool level near the bottom. So you push the ball down to the bottom of the pool. When it comes back up, it jumps up. So the deeper you push the candlesticks, the higher it will jump up. The higher it goes, the lower it will fall. see how it just it. We are talking about uh, buying when to buy. Yes. <clears throat> At some stage, I think I had you saying that uh, as the price is falling, like uh, the market is bearish, that's when you put your buy orders. If, uh, in yes. That's when you put your buy orders. Uh, don't you wait for confirmation in terms of Bitcoins? Uh, Right. Maybe wait and see whether it turns green as well. 
Yes. Because I, I'm thinking that if I uh, taking an example of uh, this. Okay. You, you can yeah. use a pointer. Push the red button. If I look at if I look at buying here and here and here and here. Yes. Okay, here according to me it's good. Mm -hmm. But here I'm spending a chance of maybe not making enough profit. Though I will make profit, but uh, at, at which stage can one put a buy? Because if I place a buy on this one, it would mean that I have to wait until it is there. That's yes. when I make money. Okay, so ultimately, when you, you don't have any lines, only candlesticks, mm -hmm. then you want to wait for green candlesticks before you buy. Mm -hmm. You want to see the price is showing that there is an output trade. Because if you bought here, you're correct, you're not going to make so much profit. So, you're pulling a bang. He's telling you that it's gone extreme out. And here's the time when you're actually ready to buy. You, you have to be so quick sometimes to buy. But because you're building a bank, not like the previous graph, it was going like this. Mm -hmm. This one is going like this. This is dangerous. See? Mm -hmm. Because that bottom building the bank is going down, it shows you that it will still go further down and further up. So when I see this happening, I don't know even if it's going to go right down there. It could still go further down. So that, that is, you, you're having a new rule, set of rules placed within your buying orders. So ideally, you want to, when you start placing your orders, you know any time that this is going to change direction. But also, with the crypto market, you can see a dip there and a chart up there. The, the, the traders that are using bots, are basically trading on every time it falls and picks up on 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%. But you as a, as a manual trader wants to see the first green candlesticks up. The rule of trading is wait for your green candlesticks before you buy. Wait for, so you actually have to have physically seen that the price is picking up and then you know. But the difference between cryptocurrency trading and forex trading, um, this is where the difference comes, is that it did change direction over there and start picking up, but it also took a deep dip there. And there, there's 2% that you could have made because you placed buy all this right down to the bottom. So, I want you to make not make 5% profit, I want you to make 7 to 10% profit by strategically placing your order. So you will, that's the right thing, buy when the big green candlesticks start showing, but also expect there might be a sudden dip like that there, because that happened. And that is exciting, because the longer you, um, the more red candlesticks, the longer the red candlesticks, the more prominent it's going to come up again. And if it goes down like that, it will come up like a V. If it goes round like that, it will pick up round. You see, there's your, your, your cup and handle. We call this a cup and handle. So when you see this roundness forming, at the bottom of the roundness, you can buy again and expect that the level where it started, more or less that level there, you can sell again. So that's called a cup and handle. Yeah, so, that, um, wait for your green candlesticks, don't buy to, and, and with the crypto market, sometimes this happens, and then this happens, this happens, and this happens. So, you, you can take, make opportunities out of every time of this. So, the lower you buy, the better for you. That's why the guys are often making mistakes. You see, there's that, it only went up briefly there. And there was no green candlesticks to show there was an upward trend, but there was a horizontal trend. So if I continued, um, if I bought here yeah, because the sword's coming back from the building event, I would still make my profit, but place more by all this 
that's a trick I've learned now to, to make the kind of profits that I make. And I don't spend lots of time trading. Why does the Minecraft So you need to set yours to um, a six, a five, five minute and 24 hours. So click on five minute candlestick. So you always trade on a five present graph. After you've studied the previous trends, you will put it five minutes, six hours. Let's see what other one you can have look at. You see what's happened on this one? There was a sharp fall. So when I see this happening, it's now bouncing, it's bouncing up and down between the middle line and the bottom of the of there. And I see this happening, I'm placing orders always here by down there. Always below there. So it's just some that that was not even five seconds, it just came no. back. That is the side. And you see when you, you know we call these those spinning tops and, this, and bottoms. When you see that happen, you're definitely going to see the price coming down because there's, there's panic on the bottom. It's panic, and because it keeps still staying there, unless this is going to cross that blue line. Remember the bold line underneath prices fall. Unless it crosses the blue line, it's not going to go. Okay. So what it's going to carry on just bouncing, 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 bouncing. So a trader will look. Where can I buy underneath it? So when, when it eats it there, I can sell it there. And sometimes those trades, I said, sometimes um, online with five or six traders. One is in India, one is in, in uh, Ukraine, the other one is, uh, there's two, two other countries, France. And we go and sit and do a trade together, and I say, guys, are you ready? Start placing when they start placing their trades there between those two lines. And what I tell them is once, and then I just watch this part. I just watch this. Where it says you have. And so what happens is as soon as We've all bought over there. You're going to see this one's going to jump down to about there. As soon as it's bought, it jumps up 2 or 3%. So it shows here, and then I tell the guys, sell. They don't even know they've received the coin, and then I tell them, sell. And immediately we'll all sell together. We make 3%. Because you planned your you, you plan your buy order, you see this one's gonna to drop to about there and there. You place your buy order in that between ninety-three and ninety-four. It's going to or uh, up to ninety-five. When it drops there, it buys you sell it because it's because the price is going up. And that's that's not even a five minute trade. The fact that you've actually traded you that's bought, jumped up again, that's like a five second trade. So uh, that's what I call the uh, five second trade. Just because you strategically placed in the fireworks. And this is going to keep on going now. Look at this. And because when we look at last year, last year at the same time, we um, are now, when is this? Bitcoin. Bitcoin was only picked up this year. But let's take um, what we did earlier was we took Ethereum, we clicked on that. Uh, what is that? When we take we take our graph, you see there is the patterns. So we put it on like 30 minutes. Let's 
see that it's at 154 feet. That's just the down to the western. So, um, it's even headway tracking for feet and nonsense like that. Now, I'm going to put down more glasses. It will just work in the background and track all of those threads. Okay, so I'm put it 30 minutes and one month. So let's try and get a picture in our mind what has happened this month so far. It's got two twin peaks, well there's a twin peak on its own. It's picked up three times very nicely and it's been bouncing small. Let's now take this graph. You take your mouse, you click on that little piece that you've got highlighted there. Hold, hold the left click in. Drag it. So we're going to drag it back to last year this time. Today is the 18th. Alright, so last year this time, or before this time, it went up pretty high. So obviously, it's almost done the opposite. Right? But what we do see is this is happening with the currencies at the moment. In the next two days, when the moon phase changes, we might see the prices falling again. And look how low it is. It went back to where it was. And then we go into June. In June, is a very hectic month. It's a time that cryptocurrency traders panic and make a lot of money because of certain. Look at that. Last year, Ethereum, the Dow was hacked. It came down from 30 to 13. The guys panicked. Some of one, one very wealthy guy phoned me and said, can we trust these cryptocurrencies? Blah, blah, blah. I said, it's time, it's opportunity time. Let's wait for it to hit the low. This was on the weekend. Friday, this actually started. Friday night. And it's not, it went. So every time it, it actually put a little wind down, we bought more and we sold it, and then came down. We bought so. so I had one, one that point before the weekend started, so at the end of the weekend I had two that points. So I doubled my money on the weekend. So you make money when they spend. You make money when prices fall. And what happens is, you can, what you do is you, you, you make a mistake. You bought there because you saw maybe it's going to come up again over here. If you see it falling more, just sell. If you buy a game menu, and it falls more, you sell. You lose 3%, 3%, but if you buy when it starts picking up again, you make all your profits back up again. So, we like to keep an eye, and this is the um, June 21, the winter equinox for Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere, Summer Equinox. So, we, we take this down, let's take it to December 21. Let's see if December 21 had, had any effect. You see that? On December 21. December 21, up until it's the 28th of December. It wasn't like this stuff. It was there you can see a di direct change in the market. So that's why we keep an eye on those days. So your, your advanced course, you get six months free signals on a loop. They give you all this information. Then we put on two WhatsApp groups. You'll also be on two WhatsApp groups. The first, the, the one, also the signal group, you'll be on there on that group for two months. If you want to stay on the group, it's 200 grand. I'm, I'm thinking of actually bringing the price down so that more people can, can participate.
that's a passion I feel because often when guys think I've got a guy who's trading, that's his only he's sitting eight hours a day trading. That's his only income. And he's making money, but then he's making mistakes all also because he doesn't read what the Chinese say. He doesn't look at the faces and stuff. He's just watching what's happening. And let's say you're on this little boat in the sea and you don't realize I'm on a very high wave and I'm coming to the edge of that wave but I'm, it's going nicely, it's going up and the next thing that wave comes down you and your little boat come tumbling down with it but if you knew before the time that this wave is going to be doing this you would have thought you could have made provision for Okay, so we, we are basically... And in, the, in, the, in those signals, uh, you would uh, provide this information that uh, uh, sell here uh, or buy there. You would also provide the, the information. Right, let me I'll show you what, what I did today. So what time, there's certain times of the day which, which are good to, to buy and sell. And especially at night, let's go to the, it's called the PST group. So, you'll see that I will have pictures of the graph, mm -hmm. and then I will discuss the graph on the, on the voice note, mm -hmm. and then the next graph, so I'll take the top 5 or top 10 currencies, and I'll actually compare them each, each other, and I'll say, which one is the best one to try to you know, and why? Okay, and then uh, uh, it's a discussion. Yeah, it's, anyone can discuss. Then I'll also put there, for instance, it, it's a sac sacrifice day and, and it's uh, avoiding. So if you trade on a day like this, trade quickly. Don't spend the day trading. Because if the Chinese say sacrifice, it means we also try and need to keep a balance in life. You know why things go wrong for us? because we can become unbalanced. If you look at Israel, they became um, prisoners to Babylon. Babylon. You know why they became prisoners? You know. You know. Most people don't. They, they, this is, um, this is, you know, that the, the, yes. Weeping Willows. They were commanded that when they plant crops, for six years they must plant the crop and they must rest the land in the seventh year. There will be enough food for the seventh year. Guess what they did? You know how to do it. says, No, I'm not, I'm not going to, but I'm going to rent this up to my neighbor and he can work the land. And what happened after this 49 years of doing that, they had to go for 490 years to Babylon to be slaves to those people. So, because there's a balance in life, there's a time to sleep, there's a time to work, there's a time, there's a time, there's a time, there's a time. There's a time. The Chinese like to watch the balance, and of course, there's, there's the effects of the star and the moon and the sun and all of that on our lives. But keeping a balance means. You, you're, going to, you're going to make a lot more money, you're going to be a lot more awake if you rest enough and you know which days to rest because some of those days say business trading day and that day you can't keep up with all the trades because there's so much profits to be made. You don't know where to stop and which ones to make. And then all the other days you can decide which time you want to trade because there's no specific rules for those days. But like if we go um, to that calendar, Let's go, to, let's go to China. I was just showing you guys earlier this on the 29th. You see that if there's anything I suggest doing that, except avoid it. In other words, if you can take the day off, if you can do as little as possible, it would be good for you. And you'll see generally on a day like that, a lot of people fight, a lot of accidents happen. People that commit suicide, lots of things happen because there's something in a way that's happening that 
you just want to step aside and let the world pass, the traffic pass here with me. And then another day, like sometimes you see the day before, which is could have been a good day. See all the things you could do on, on the day before. Mm -hmm. There's more things on that day than in, in, in the other day. You even can go for a haircut. And then on the 30th, also avoid anything. It's 31st. Okay, we can do a few things. But on the group, I want to, I'll tell the guys, today is a business trading day. In other words, the prices are doing this. Uh, changing direction. If it says avoid anything else, the prices are doing this. So, you can trade, but trade quick. Don't sit all day in front of the computer. Because your family and your loved ones need that attention also. So it's not just about reading the graph. It's like when, when I look at tomorrow, tonight, late hours of the night, tomorrow morning, I will see it's the 18th today. I will look at the calendar and I will see. Alright, so the 19th, there's two things happening. So last quarter moon at half past two and half past three, moon at descending now. So I'm going to see, if you stay awake tonight, the early hours of the morning, you'll see this happen. There's going to be lots of ups and downs, and the guys are going to be confused because those two things are taking place within two hours of each other. And then what I do is I generally take a trend of the Bitcoin price because the Bitcoin price <coughs> is the most important thing in the equilibrium. Look at the US dollar. I see that trend. You see that trend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the one week, two weeks, one month. Okay, so you can see the Bitcoin price cut from 1,175 to 1,912. It's increased by 80% just in one month. So what I'm seeing there is I'm seeing twin peaks. So maybe early tomorrow morning, the price is going to come down a bit. bit. So if I buy Bitcoins as, as the price starts dipping, I sell it to US dollars. When it goes up again, I buy more Bitcoins. When it goes down again, I sell it to US dollars. When it goes up, I buy more Bitcoins. And I make the profit every time change. Okay, so there's a definite trend. But you are seeing some very rocky happenings here. And let's, let's put it on just on two days. So now it's picking up. Making a, a loud market, making a quiet market, making a loud market, making a quiet market. So uh, it will bounce down a bit. And then if you take last year, exactly the same time, you take one month off, um, and you move one back to last year. See what happened. So from May 17th, 18 started coming down for the 21 and then it started picking up heavily. You can see what's happening there. Just went down. So as a trader, 
if I'm not training much during this time, and I'm, it's, I see the price start falling, and I say, I want US dollar. Let's say I for four, four three hundred dollars or a thousand dollars of it. By the time it hits here, and I buy more Bitcoin, now I've got $1,200 because it came out in the I've got 20% more Bitcoin because I sold it to US dollars at the end. Then when it's all going up, I've already ready made money. So, waiting can make you money. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Yes. So, I've, I've had two or three people in the last while that just by doing nothing, they made money. So if you wake up in the morning and you see the Bitcoin price looks like it's put it four days. If the Bitcoin price is doing that, that's the first thing you do. If it's doing that, be careful to trade anything. Because Ethereum is going down. Other currencies are going down. So you're making money by waiting. So your thousand eight hundred and sixty-five, you've got no wonder. $1,865 in your account. And it got there with $1,931 in your account. One Bitcoin is now worth $1,930. Without doing anything. So you're all making money. Your, your um, 65 to 31, that's uh, 35, you've made $63 by doing that. So you will often see guys are panicking when the Bitcoin price is falling because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to handle that situation. As a trader, you say, thank you guys. I, I have an alarm, it's all Bitcoin alerts. It woke me up at 2 o'clock this morning. I quickly sold my Bitcoins to US dollars and I still got the amount of dollars I had. But the Bitcoin is down there. And now as it, if it comes up again, I just buy more, I'm like 20%, 10%, whatever. Yeah. 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 I never want to graph that flat. Because you don't make money on a flat graph. The trader is always looking for volatility. Questions? More questions will come up when we come for the follow up session. Because the next, the next session, I'll give you some more information. In the next session, I'll give you some more information. Because I want, this is like the rain on the hard ground. It's only going to sink in a little bit tonight. Your head is going to go. Zzzz. Next time, the water will sink a little bit deeper, and then you will get more confident with, with your trading. Do they have a demo account? No, no. What I'll do is um, I will I will um, I will, I will talk to you about what we can do for you. But, um, I think with maybe with my next courses, I'm going to actually put add a hundred grand into everyone's account to start with, it. so that they've got something to start with. But <clears throat> you know where the word demo comes from? Come up with any word that sounds like demo. Demonstration, what other words are that come with demo? Demonic. <laughs> Demonic. Demo. Democracy. Democracy. It you know what that is? What de what is it what is the most rational thing you can think of when you think of demo? Demo is not there to chase you away and scare you. Is there to entice you? Is there to put you on the mountain and show you all the kingdoms of the world that you can have? And then, when you're on the top of things, you... I've had how many guys that started demo accounts and they lose all the money when they trade real time. So, what I say to you is start with 0 0.0001 on the trade or 0 0.01 on the trade or zero. Put small amounts and then trade and then as you become more confident, 
pick it down with bigger amounts. And if you want to um, call me on a certain day that's convenient for you, we can sit and do the trade together. Physically do, I'll tell you, okay, open the order now, set your buy order, and then sell it. You can see how easy it is. Buy underneath the bottom line, sell on the gold bar. If you wait, wanting to wait another hour, you can sell up there. I sell most of mine between there because I've got other things to do. Okay. 